Good day, engineers. Para sa video natin ngayon, ang i-discuss pa rin natin will be the ultimate bearing capacity for the centrically loaded shallow foundation. So dito sa video natin, ang i-discuss natin will be method number 1 which is the Meyerhoff's effective area method na kung saan ito yung pwede nating gamitin para ma-determine yung ultimate bearing capacity ng eccentrically loaded na shallow foundation. So let's start this video. So we'll start by discussing paano nga ba natin ginagawa yung Meyerhoff's effective area method. So for example, meron tayo ditong figure na kung saan eccentrically loaded yung foundation. So ibig sabihin, it carries an action load and a moment or yung load natin is merong eccentricity since nag-deviate yung center of gravity ng column dun sa center of gravity ng footing natin. So, ang tendency dito sa sample natin is this is a two-way eccentricity. So, ibig sabihin, it has eccentricity along x and it has eccentricity along z. So, itong part na to will be our actual load. So, the first rule for the Meyerhoff's effective area method is to determine the effective width and the effective length. So, paano nga ba natin yun? Dine-determine. So, from this figure, alam natin na yung base natin is equal sa length. Kasi that is a square. So, what if ang nangyari is yung eccentricity along the x-axis is mas malaki kaysa sa eccentricity kay z-axis. So, ang tendency is paghahanapin natin yung uh, effective length and effective width. Susundin pa rin natin yung rule that B prime, so yung B prime na yan, yan yung effective width or yung smallest dimension, that should be lesser than L prime. Sabi nga natin, lesser dimension si B prime. So, yun pa rin ang kukunin natin as B prime. And from this figure, may kita natin na kaya siya tinawag na effective area method. Kasi, ang kinukuha natin is yung effective area ng footing natin, which is Uh, ang ibig niyan sabihin doon, yan yung lumalapat lang doon sa lupa. So, sabi ni Mayor Hoff, we have two easy na idededuck and two EX na idededuck doon sa footing natin. So, kung saan siya parallel, doon natin siya idededuck. So, yung B, ang deduction niya will be two easy and yung L, ang deduction niya will be two EX. Ngayon, binigyan tayo ng condition na yung EX is mas malaki kesa kay EZ. Ibig sabihin, kung gagawin natin yung B prime and L prime, ibig sabihin, ang B prime natin dyan will be equivalent to a value L minus 2EX and yung L prime natin will be equivalent to B minus the 2 easy. So, let's take a sample para mas lalo nyo maintindihan. So, let's say ang B natin and ang L is equivalent to a value 1.5 meters. So, kung meron akong eccentricity along the x-axis which is 0.5 meters And kung meron akong eccentricity along the z-axis, which is 0.3 meters, ibig sabihin nun, if we get the b prime, hindi natin susundan yung notations ng b dito. Kasi ang rule natin is kailangan si b prime is mas mababa kaysa kay l prime. So, sa case natin, si b prime dyan will be equivalent. May kita naman natin na mas malaki si 0.5 kaysa doon kay 0.3. So, ibig sabihin, pag mas malaking ibinawas natin, mas liliit yung dimension. 
So that means B prime will be 1.5 minus 0 0.5. So that will be 1 meter. And the L prime will be equivalent to 1.5 minus 0 0.3, which is equivalent to 1.2 meters. So, nasunod natin yung rule na B prime is lesser than the L prime. Kasi mas malaki si 1.2 kesa kay 1 meter. And that is the first rule of the Meyerhoff's effective area method. Now, we proceed to the next rule for the Meyerhoff's effective area method. So, sabi dito, you have to determine the shape and the depth factor using the effective length and the effective width. So, sa Meyerhoff's equation kasi, alam natin na meron tayong sinusunod na uh, shape and depth factors. So, yun yung lambda CS, lambda CD, lambda CI, uh, lambda gamma S, and lambda gamma D. Uh, yung mga yun, that are shape and depth factors. So, kailangan daw natin gamitin yung effective length para ma-determine yung shape and depth factors na yun. So, ang ibig niyan sabihin, if we get lambda CS, so, dapat daw, ang gamitin na natin will be 1 plus, so that will be 0 0.2 times Kp times V prime over the L prime. Same as with lambda Qs and the lambda gamma S. So, that will be 1 plus 0 0.1 times K sub P times V prime over the L prime. Now, doon naman tayo sa depth factors. Sa so depth factors natin, nandyan si lambda CD. So, that will be 1 plus 0 0.2 square root ng, or 0 0.2 times square root ng KP times BF over B prime. And we have lambda QD and the lambda gamma D equivalent to 1 plus 0 0.1 times square root ng Kp times Df over B prime. So, yan na ngayon yung ating uh, second rule for determining the shape and the depth factors for the mayors hoffs effective area method. So, ginagamit natin to for eccentrically loaded shallow foundations. So, our next rule, the third rule, will be to use the effective width for the third term in the Meyerhoff's bearing capacity equation. Ano ibig sabihin din nun? Ibig niyan sabihin, ang third term kasi ng Meyerhoff's bearing capacity equation is yung one half. Uh, one half gamma P and gamma lambda CS or lambda gamma S, lambda gamma D, and the lambda gamma I. So, originally, yan yung third term ng Meyerhoff's bearing capacity equation. So, kapag Meyerhoff's effective area method, we'll convert this one into one half gamma B prime and gamma lambda gamma S, lambda gamma D, and the lambda gamma I. So, yan ngayon yung magiging uh, pangatlong term dun sa ating uh, Meyerhoff's Effective Area Method. Since pinalitan natin yung base dito as an effective width nung footing natin, ibig nun sabihin, yung pagkuha din natin ng gamma for this third term is maapektuhan. Ang gagamitin na natin ngayon for getting the gamma will be the B prime itself. Kaya, yung uh, footing na may ganitong condition, kagaya nito, so, kung yung B prime, dati kasi dito, so ngayon B prime na din siya, and yung triangle na ginagawa natin for B prime, or for B, will become B prime din yung height niya. So, ibig sabihin, yun yung compare natin sa D. Dati kasi, B yung compare natin for the D. So, ngayon, B prime na siya. So, ibig sabihin, itong condition na to, no water table will become kasi dati si gamma average 
So, ngayon magiging 1 over B prime na yan times So, yung nasa taas depende ko anong gamma na ito, kung dry or moist. Ito. Itong height na to. Yung D. So, that is gamma times the D plus ngayon ah uh, ang gagamitin na natin for this part of the saturation will be gamma prime or the gamma submerge times so, ang gamit na natin will be B prime minus D. So, ang compare na natin sa kanya is B prime. So, this will be the equation. So, this is just for uh, B prime which is greater than D. Kasi meron tayong condition na yung B prime is lesser than D. So, pag B prime kasi is uh, lesser than D, ibig sabihin uh, ang gamit lang ng soil natin is gamma D. Kasi nga hindi naman inabot ng water table yung B prime natin na yun. So, yun yung nakaka-apekto on the third rule ni Mayer Hoff's effective area method. And the last rule for the Mayer Hoff's effective area method will be the effective area from this analysis must be used to get the ultimate and allowable actual loads. Alam natin na ang ginagamit natin to determine the ultimate load or the ultimate actual load is PU is equal to QU over the area. At alam natin na yung allowable loads naman natin is equivalent to the QA times the area. So, whereas yung QU natin, or yung QA natin, or yung allowable, is equal to QU divided by the factor of safety. So, from this one, ang sinasabi lang niya, ang gamitin mo daw, instead of the full area, so, instead of the full area na gagamitin mo, ang gamitin mo daw is yung effective area which is A prime. So ibig sabihin nun, our A prime dyan is just equal to B prime times DL prime. So yun yung uh, gagamitin natin for the Meyerhoff's effective area method. So ibig sabihin, we'll have PU as A value QU times B prime times DL prime and our allowable will be equivalent to QA times B prime times DL prime. So, that will be the last rule for the Meyerhoff's effective area method. So, that is all for this video regarding the first method for determining the ultimate bearing capacity for eccentrically loaded shallow foundation. So, again, this is Engineer Rodolfo. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Butch TV.